Hi everyone, so today I'm going to make the sugar bottles and the sugar ice. I'm going to tell you what you need. You need a foil wrap, non-stick foil for the ice. A cup that I use to help me with the mold so I don't burn my hands. A fan, sugar, corn syrup, a glass measuring cup to heat the corn syrup. A measuring cup to measure the corn syrup, hello. Um, food coloring, thermometer for the temperature oven mitt so you don't burn yourself and a big pot of boiling water for cleanup and of course a little assistant to help you okay so you take half a cup of well the measurement is equal portions sugar to corn syrup you could do whatever recipe suits you but this is the one sweet results posted so this is the one I use so it's like I'm doubling it so you need a cup of corn syrup Stuff is sticky. Oh, I'm using regular sugar because that's what I have on hand. But if you want a nice clear bottle and nice clear ice, you should use isomalt because once you cook sugar to like the hard crack stage, the sugar starts to turn amber and then you have yellow ice or yellow bottles. If you're just making bottles, then it doesn't really matter because you can color it whatever you want. But if you want clear ice, you should use isomalt. Don't use regular sugar. It can't handle the high temperature without changing color. So, mix it up. It's going to look really grainy and yucky and nasty, but it's fine. And then I'm going to microwave it. You can cook it in a pot, you know, like traditionally, but I don't have time for that. So I just microwave it about three minutes at a time until I get to the hard crack stage. Okay, so it's been boiling for about, I would say 10 minutes. I stirred it at every two minute intervals. When you do it, it might not take so long because I did like quadruple the recipe, that's why it took so long. Right now I'm taking the temperature. If you see it turned a little bit amber, whatever, it's really hard to get a nice clear sugar. Especially when you're using just regular sugar, like I said, you have to use isomalt. And so what I have here is parchment paper and non-stick aluminum foil. This is how I make the ice. There's two ways of making ice. The first one is you crinkle up some non-stick foil. It needs to be non-stick foil or else it'll stick on the ice. And then you just pour a little bit. Then you let it set up and it pops right out. The second way, now my mother's gonna help me and I'm going to make a bottle. I use a cup to help me while she pours. You should pour it right, at, don't move the camera around like crazy babe. You should start pouring right at the edge and turn. So she pours right at the edge and I turn. And she just keeps pouring until it gets completely covered and she pour okay you can pour it all in and I keep turning while she pours okay that's enough and then I just keep turning I kind of just keep going sometimes I turn on the fan because that helps you can manage in the pot. and I hold it in front of the, the fan and I just kind of turn mm -hmm. until it sets and so I don't have to turn anymore <gasps> which sometimes takes a few minutes. So you, you can just hold it like this and turn. If you're missing some edges, you know, keep rotating the bottle, but you know, be careful because this is really hot. I don't get burned that easily, so I'm doing it without any gloves in my hands here, but I can feel the heat right here. You can definitely feel it. If you have a thinner mold, you'll feel it more. My mold's pretty thick, so I don't feel it as much. So you just, the fan helps a lot because it starts to set up right away. Some people make, uh, I think it's like a clay mold to help them do this, but I didn't want to go to that mission. <laughs> so I just use a cup because to me it's easier. I don't have to make another version of a bottle. And The instructions are in the link. They show you how to make the the second part of the mold, but I just bypassed that and it seems to work fine for me. And I can feel it heating up, it's still pretty hot. And it's still, if you 
you can see inside it's still very oozy in there. I'll turn this way for you. So you just keep turning until it starts to set. You don't want to stop turning because then you'll get one part that has, um, check it out, you'll get one part that's thicker than the other. So this takes about two minutes of turning. I can feel the heat here, it's pretty hot. And while I'm turning, I'm just gonna take the cup, put it in boiling water, because there's no way to remove hard sugar at that stage unless you boil it. So I just keep turning. I left this, I didn't color this bottle because it's just for YouTube purposes, but you can use whatever food color you want to color the bottle. I normally use Americolor, any color you want, green if you want like Heineken or Presidente, yellow if you want Corona, whatever you want. So it's still needs to dry. You can stop for now because that's just too much drying. Okay. So you just have to keep spinning it for a couple of minutes, maybe like two or three minutes until it sets up hard inside and it no longer oozes because you don't want it to be heavier on one side than the other. And then you just let it to dry, well not, not let it to dry, let it cool for about half an hour. You, you can touch and feel it's still warm. You don't want to try to unpop it from the mold until then because then it'll break off. Let's do the ice first, but if you see my ice, it's already hard. The ice gets done in like five minutes. And now you do is pull the paper and look, you can pop it off. It comes right off and then you have chips, ice chips. Let's just pop them all off. And really, the, since the foil is non-stick, it comes off right away. If you use regular foil, it does not come off right away. It gets stuck like this little piece did. <laughs> But most of them pop off right away. And I just crinkled it up. And that's it. So let me put the ice chips. There are your ice chips. Really easy to do. Well, use ice and if you don't want them to be yellowish. And as for the mold, once it cools all the way. Okay, so I put a little bit of baby powder so it wouldn't stick on me. And then you just take it and cool. And you just... Pull out the whole mold and you keep. There you go. There's the bottle. Probably better angle. You can see all of the details of the bottle. It looks like a real bottle. It looks it looks glass. Um, it's a light color, so you can see all of my mistakes. But normally I didn't have I didn't really pay too much time to it. But normally you see this the buildup up here. You keep spinning and spinning and spinning, so you get an even coat of sugar. I was in a rush, but there, you see it, it's a bottle. It's hollow inside. These sharps are jagged, so be careful. Um, when you put it in the cake, cut out a circle in the cake and just jab it in there. And since this bottle is just for practice, I don't really care I'm handling it with my fingers. I don't know if you can see that, but when you handle it with your fingers, you get fingerprint marks. So when you're using it on a cake, use gloves so that you don't get all these fingerprint marks. For the cap, I just did a little circle of fondant and did indentations with a tool, painted it silver, and there's a silver cap. You can put whatever label you want here or there, or whatever you want to do. This is without color, so it looks a little weird, but if you color it a nice green, like in my pictures, then you can't see any of these mistakes. So there you go, how to make a bottom, how to make ice.